First, I want to counter something that dwarfs party politics. Indeed, to an issue which dwarfs every other issue of our time. We have invented weapons powerful enough to destroy the whole world. Others have created political systems evil enough to seek to enslave the whole world. با این رفتاری که آمریکا و انگلیس از خودشون نشون دادند معلوم شد که اینها صلاحیت حضور در مجامع ملت ایران یک ملت صاحب فناوری هسته است و کسانی که با ملت ما میخوان حرف بزنند باید بدانند که با کدوم ملت دارن حرف بزنند Every free nation must train both to defend its freedom and to ensure the peace of the world. The first duty of a British government is the defense of the realm, and we shall discharge that duty. The Mujahideen are on their way! The Mujahideen are on their way! It's not Iraq, it's not Gaza. These pictures were taken in downtown London. The British Muslim community, which numbers almost 2 million out of a total of 50, has been deliberating since last year's terrorism. Here is one of the examples of how the same extremists see the future in Britain. All of the world belongs to Allah, and we will live according to the Sharia wherever we are. This is a fundamental belief of the Muslims. You know, if I was to go to the jungle tomorrow, I'm not going to live like the animals. You live here by choice. Do you I not believe in democracy? No, I don't at all. We believe that people must live according to the Sharia. Sooner or later, it will happen, they say. One day the Sharia will be implemented in Britain. It's a matter of time. Whether it comes through our peaceful uh, discussion and debate, whether it comes because the, uh, the Mujahideen will send an army one day, Allah knows. A recent study by think tank Civitas concluded there are around 85 Sharia courts currently operating in Britain. He wants to establish an Islamic state in Britain and institute fully-fledged Sharia law throughout. That would mean cutting off people's hands for stealing and stoning women for adultery. But in the absence of a state to support that, for now he can only judge civil matters. Terrorism is a deadly threat to our way of life and we will not be cowed by it. We will continue to resist it with all our power and to uphold the principles of democratic government. about the determination of the British people. It was removed by the men and women who a few months ago brought a renewed sense of pride and self-respect to our country. They were for the most part young. Let all of us here and in the wider audience outside pause and reflect on what we who stayed at home owe to <laughs> surprised the world. The British patriotism was rediscovered in those spring days. It was never rarely lost. It would be no bad thing if the feeling that swept the country then were to continue to inspire us. <laughs> and
Britain has little to fear in the years to come. The horrors of war are indivisible. We all want peace, but not peace at any price. Peace with justice and freedom. Using democracy to promote radical Islam in the name of democracy, this is what it sounds like in an open debate at one of the universities. We like to die, and you all like to live. You like to go to your pubs, you like to see your wife and children, good for you. So don't fight the Muslims and you will be safe. We want to remove this idea that Islam is a religion of peace. Islam is not a religion of peace. Pleasant news, which points to the continuation of a struggle between extremist and reform Islam within those communities and between the extremists and the Britons themselves. We drink the blood of the enemy, we can face them anywhere. That is Islam and that's jihad. And our message of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said, "Anadayyuk al-qatal." He said, "I laugh when I kill." And he said to his own people, "Wallahi, laqad jittukum bidhabh." He said, "I come to slaughter all of you." So anybody who wants to stand in face of the Muslims, he will face the banner of jihad. But peace, freedom, and justice are only to be found where people are prepared to defend them. Kevin Carroll certainly seemed to think that this was true. He claims that predominantly Muslim areas like this one enjoy much better facilities and services than his. State of the art equipment, all safety and all the modern spec and stuff. See the money they spent here and then you look at where what we've got where we live. It's just equal equal playing fields, you know, let's have let's have a quality across the board. That's all it he is. Then took me to Farley Hill, the traditionally white working class estate where he grew up. This is as good as it gets for us. I mean, I think this was probably installed in the 70s. As you can see, it's all the latest state of the art. You know, two swings, because we've only got we've only got two kids and five years. Like we've been completely abandoned culturally and financially by the council, our local government. They haven't got a voice. Every sector of the community in Luton Town is praised and, and funded and encouraged except for the English. Now that is outrageous because I'm the son of immigrants. That has to be fixed. I met up with local Labour councillor Sean Timoney to see how funding in Luton was allocated. Okay, we can see that here. She wanted to show me a new park, just a five minute walk away from Kevin's house. And this is a short walk from the Farley Hill community centre. Yeah, yeah, five minute walk. Bring you around here, you can see there's loads of kids out here, there's loads of open land. So to say that there's nothing around here is, is ludicrous really. This park was spending um, almost £100,000 on, you can see that some new equipment already started, there's some on, on the way. They've got the new wooden play area just been added there. My parents are Irish immigrants, so I'm not even really English. My blood's not English, but my belief is that you don't have to have English blood. If you're Sikh or you're black and, and you're born in England, you're English.
church. Luton is a multicultural town. Being English is not about being white. It's nothing to do with being white. Being English is what you do for your country. If you're born here, you are English. We thank, we thank every single non-white member of the English Defence League for setting an example. Luton is a multicultural town. Being English is not about being white. It's nothing to do with being white. Being English is what you do for your country. If you're born here, you are English. So we thank, we thank every single non-white member of the English Defence League for setting an example. The first duty of a British government is the defence of the realm, and we shall discharge that duty. My parents are Irish immigrants, so I'm not even really English. My blood's not English, but my belief is that you don't have to have English blood. If you're Sikh or you're black and, and you're born in England, you're English. It's obviously I'm not racist because I'm the son of immigrants. It's called the English Defence League, but although it's called the English Defence League, both of my parents were Irish immigrants to this country. Obviously, I'm not racist, because I'm the son of immigrants. It's called the English Defence League, but although it's called the English Defence League, both of my parents were Irish immigrants to this country. Terrorism is a deadly threat to our way of life, and we will not be cowed by it. We will continue to resist it with all our power, and to uphold the principles of democratic government. But peace, freedom and justice are only to be found where people are prepared to defend them. Remember what Bismarck said. Do I want war? Of course not. I want victory. <laughs> 